Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. Chris here with another, another box, another box, and and I can, I I can, not tell you where this case came from, uh, other than it was part of a donation from from someone obviously um, who had some old gear. Um, so we're gonna take a look at this box and uh, and get things uh, up and running on it. This is another one of these systems where, you know, we kind of pull parts systems apart and clean them up and fix them and then um rebuild them to get them in you know up and running shape so we'll take a look at this case here this i can case pretty generic uh looking case nothing special about it but it's nice and clean view um was uh, was missing the front panel here it did have another uh optical drive in here um so i did put in a black colored drive that would uh fit better this is a dvd multiplayer um it has this second uh drop down tray where you could add like another optical drive to it, um, which I didn't put in, um, but I, I guess the idea was that you would, um, I don't know, maybe if it originally came with two of these faceplates and the person who who had it decided that they didn't like this kind of flip down design, so they just got rid of that panel completely, um, but there's nothing behind here. Two empty plates and then this um, punch out, which has a reset button, and then there's a cutout here that you can put through if you had a, a you know, a media drive, media tray, or a floppy drive, uh, and then a, there's a firewire plug in here uh, that you could cut out as well. So obviously, so is the time period in which this case was designed for. Power button, nice big blocky, bright, clicky feeling. Um, some LEDs here to show your activity lights, and then um, USB and uh, audio ports on the bottom, which I believe I do. I do have those plugged in correctly. Always have this challenge between you know newer boards that have AFP versus AC97 connections and they're not really, you know, they're not made for each other, but they will work. Uh, side of the case here, you can see there's a little bit of stuff going on. When I'll show you when I take this door off, there's like a, a funnel here to help direct airflow from the processor and then a little bit of an air gap here to let some air in. We'll move around to the back. Uh, so I had to add in another, a different power supply than uh, this. I think this case didn't have a power supply in it. Um, so I had to add one uh, in here, and then uh, we've got the system board uh, installed. Um, this has got uh, onboard uh, video from the i3 CPU that's uh, that's on this system, so that handles that pretty well, and which is good because on this case it it didn't come with the the piece that's supposed to kind of slide in and screw into place to hold any PCI cards you have installed. Um, and as a result, if I installed a graphics card here, it wouldn't have anywhere to go. And I would have had to, I guess, drill a hole uh, in this or punch a hole in this metal here to get it to stay. Um, so I found it good that I didn't have to worry about, you know, messing around with that too much. Uh, so we'll get this thing open now and take a look inside. Grab the old trusty orange screwdriver here. I have nicer screwdrivers, but you may be the same as me. You always use the old crappy screwdriver that you've used forever instead of using the nice screwdriver. <laughs> like you get a new bit set or something and it comes with a nice, a nice bit holder. Oh, uh, here's the piece right here. So it's just got this kind of thing going on here to help push air from the fan from the processor up, um, which I guess is okay on this one as well, because uh, in this case, uh, there isn't really anything else. There's not a lot of going on here that's gonna be creating heat. Um, you've got some ambient coming off the board chipset here, and then the processor is gonna be making most of the heat, so it pushes that air out, and then you've got your um, your PSU is gonna suck some air out. So here's this box here. Uh, this is a um, uh, an Asus uh, motherboard, uh, if I can remember here. Uh, what the model number on this thing was. Yeah, so it's a a P8H61-M LE slash SCM board, if you're if you're interested. <laughs> so we got an i3 processor um, installed in here. Uh, uh, I've got eight gig of RAM installed in this one. So this is DDR3 based memory, which means, and I've got like older memory I have a lot less of, and especially uh, higher capacities I have a lot less of, but when it comes into DDR3 and DDR4 RAM, I have lots of that. Uh, so it was pretty easy to 
put a pair of matched four gig sticks in here um, to be able to uh, give this thing a good amount of memory. And then I assign the maximum amount of shared memory in the BIOS um, to be used um, off the off the the graphics controller. So like you know push it to its limit, which I think was half a half a gig, five hundred twelve meg, which is fine for general computing use. Um, another system here where I've I've made use of some of the uh, 2.5 inch form factor disk drives that I have a lot of. Um, uh, I have a lot less mechanical 3.5 inch drives than I have the 2.5 inch here. And I obviously have very few SSDs to be able to use, but this is a SATA drive. So I did the same thing right before I put a little static plastic on the bottom end of this one, just so the any contacts with the metal here would be no issue at all. Um, screwed it in the top sides here. And then on the bottom, there isn't screw holes to be able to fit on this type of chassis. So I zip tied it so it'll hold it in place nicely. So that's snug and fit and won't go anywhere. And then we've got our power and SATA cables. Um, as good a cable management as you're probably going to be able to get in a case like this, these older style cases. Um, so we kind of just routed everything back and shoved it in behind the, um, the, uh, the back of the system. And then I put the back panel on to kind of hold it all in place. Um, so that's, uh, that's where that one's sitting. Um, in terms of capability. Uh, and then the power supply in this one, I think is like a 350 watt uh, power supply. It's optimal rating is a 286 watt. There's not gonna be enough power draw in a system like this to be able to handle anything that, that you're gonna need to handle anything heavier than that. Um, if you did decide that you wanted to add a, you know, maybe a, a, a 75 watt GPU, uh, into the PCI slot that's available here, you'd be fine. If you needed to go a little bit power, you could probably make it work with this one. Uh, I know I have seen some videos from some other guys. Um, I remember Tech Yes City, who's a YouTuber in Australia who, you know, does uh, rebuilds and sells them online. Um, he was talking about, you know, you can get a pretty modern PC and depending on if you don't have a lot in it, like just system with a GPU and one hard drive or an M.2 or something, um, you can really have a lot less power draw than you think you're going to have. It's only when you start adding in, uh, you know, multi GPUs or you've got, um, you know, dual SSDs in a RAID 1 for your boot drive and then three spinning drives in a RAID 5 for your... <laughs> for your uh for all your games and stuff you're adding a lot more components into the system and that's going to start increasing the power draw um drastically so you know in a basic system like this you're really not going to be putting that much into place so that's uh that's what we're looking at here pretty basic uh simple design uh, going to be able to handle a lot so now we're going to do the uh, uh do the the spin through here and we're going to get this thing set up and powered up We'll see how long it takes with the mechanical drive. Nice quiet operation though. Um, you know, even with an Intel stock fan, when you're not doing stuff like overclocking, um, systems can be pretty quiet. <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. You know, having having higher, more expensive components in them uh, to keep things cool. Obviously, if you're going to be uh, overclocking, you need to you know you need to get better cooling, which means you're going to need better you know quieter fans to to make up for that. Um, otherwise, you're going to be really loud. But you'll see here again, as usual, you know, Windows is going to take about a minute to load up because it's coming off a mechanical drive. Um, it just, you know, there is that that time. But uh, this system not being all that old in terms of being an i3, in terms of, uh, you know, the amount of the amount of uh, specs that the system's got is going to be OK. I'm asking, please wait, maybe there's an update that's pending here on this system. So this as usual is is one of the things I'm I'm really lucky with getting coming across is having systems that already had Windows 7 installed on them or already had Windows some I mean very rarely I get machines that have already had Windows 10 installed on them but had Windows 7 installed on them so I can either um I do an in place upgrade and then I'll and then I'll replace you know other components uh or if I've got a a system that's really not doing too good, I might take the hard drive that's got Windows 7 and save it to use in another machine. So this was a case where the cust the person the customer ugh, the the person who had this who donated it it had a mechanical drive that was in really bad shape, but it had Windows 7 installed on it. So I did that in place upgrade to Windows 10, and then once that was done, I that 
is digitally signed and it's now connected up with the Windows server. So now I can replace the hard drive with something that's going to last a little bit longer than a, you know, old 60 gig hard drive that's, you know, got a ton of boot errors on it um, with with a mechanical drive that I know is in good shape um, and is going to last a couple years, a couple years longer. Right, so we're done booting now and we'll just take a look here on the screen. Uh, what's going on as things load up and get up and running. We'll load up the... Um, We'll load up the Google Chrome first to do this um, and get the uh, just quickly show off the performance um, specs on here. So it should be very easy to be able to run a straightforward 1080p streaming video uh, and, and not give off any issues on the system. I believe I've tested this already. So my, my remembering if I've been to YouTube before to test something out is that I've actually changed it to dark mode. <laughs> So, so that goes uh, that goes on there. We'll quickly close this message here, and we'll just click on the first uh, message uh, here for this video trailer. Um, action movie trailers are usually what I try to do the um, the view on because it uh, you know we've got stuff that's moving fast and and happening on the screen all at once. Uh, it can help out in terms of seeing if you're going to see stuttering or 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 frame drops. But, uh, you know, looks pretty crystal clear. Uh, I'm not seeing anything, you know, cause an issue. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to run at 1440p or, or, at, uh, or at 4K, you might start seeing a little bit of challenge. Although, you know, you never know. Um, uh, based on the, the graphics memory that's available, it might be able to be okay. But I would say 1080p is what I'm always going to shoot for, for one of these systems to be able to handle things well enough. And uh, this doesn't seem to be causing any problems. So we'll quickly open up the old hardware info. And it'll probably give me an alert to upgrade because I know that it, hardware info just got moved to 6.24 version, I think. Um, we won't be downloading an upgraded version of that uh, for what we need to be able to do here. We're just taking a look at the, at the sensor data. So it's pulling up all that management information and all the system info information from all the various sensors that components have. We'll get this pop up out of the way. So here we go. You can see this uh, i3 Sandy Bridge processor. It is a two core hyper threaded. So two cores, four, uh, uh, four uh, available with hyper threading. So that's pretty good. Uh, speed wise, 3.1 gigahertz. Uh, the 250 gig SATA hard drive uh, that is a uh, uh, going to give you know a good amount of good, great amount of capacity for you know a standard home machine, and then uh, eight gig of memory available uh, with those two Hynix uh, kits uh, as well, and then uh, you can see here that it's marking off upwards of 2.5 gig of memory that can be addressed for the HD Graphics 2000 chip that's integrated. So, I mean, you've got the memory available there and the, having the eight gig of RAM certainly helps out in terms of being able to, to suck some of that away without impacting system performance. I have found on some of the machines I built here, if I only did like, when I've only got like two or th two, three or four gig of RAM installed, um, having that integrated graphics can actually cause problems with the system being able to run effectively because if it's grabbing you know a gig or 1.5 gig worth of ram out of that there's not enough for windows to run all the other applications that it needs so having a discrete graphics processor in those systems is really important on a box like this where i can get 8 gig of ram installed or i, I probably could have put more you don't need more than that but knowing that it, if it, even if it pulls two and a half gig of ram into graphics I've still got five and a half gig running windows, which is more than enough. Uh, for thermals wise here, you can see the system's hovering around processor wise around 47 degrees, um, package around the same. So really not you know much to worry about there. Uh, system motherboard package, right? 26 degrees. So it's keeping pretty cool. Uh, memory, 28 degrees. Right, so we're not running very hot at all inside the system. Um, the amount of room you've got to be able to to grow your thermal uh, levels there is is pretty high. So all in all, a pretty decent system. Again, something like this is perfect for home use. Um, getting yourself online and doing some online training or capability 
Um, ideally, where I like to see these these systems end up is you know local community centers or churches, uh, uh, you know youth groups. Uh, where they would put a, something like this with a couple of other donated systems in a, you know, uh, mocked up or, uh, uh, you know, janky computer lab. And uh, that can be used for kids to get on and do some e-learning or some adults who are looking at restarting their lives, getting some online training or online education. Uh, and you don't need a super powerful machine to be able to do something like that. Um, another thing that's come up recently is is the ability to do something like um, like streaming stream gaming, right? So using something like, uh, Stadia or uh, the GeForce, is it called GeForce Now, um, uh, online st game streaming service, this is probably more than enough machine to be able to handle something like that. So you could play a modern game using one of those services um, without having too much trouble. I wouldn't recommend necessarily playing those games on the system as it is locally. Uh, you wouldn't get very good performance at all, but you certainly have the opportunity to make that work. And then again, if you wanted to put some money into upgrading it to be able to handle some stuff, put in a discrete GPU, maybe upgrade the memory to 16 gig, you probably could get some better performance out of it, but again, it's not really what I'm trying to give these systems a second life for in the first place. It's for these things to be able to be usable by someone for another number, couple of years for general computing requirements, where otherwise they just end up on the scrap pile somewhere and going to waste. And, you know, there's enough waste in our society as it is. So hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you, uh, you know, have any suggestions um, about, you know, stuff you want to see me uh, talk about here um, or explain, uh, you know, in terms of putting these systems together, I'd be more than happy to chat about that in the comments below. And then other than that, uh, you know, keep safe and healthy and uh, we'll see you in the next one.